My mother was a weaver, and my father was a professor of design at Stanford in the art department, um, and he was a painter. And I think he was foremost, first and foremost, a painter. My brother describes life with my family as a treasure hunt, and it really was. It was all about beauty and the support of art, really, for both my brother and I. It was, we could have done anything we wanted, of course. Our parents were so supportive, but to be creative people was really what they hoped for and what they nurtured in us. It was really encouraged in my family that you explore as much as you can for as long as you can before you arrive at what you're gonna do. In college, I studied everything from anthropology to music to design and art, and uh, worked mostly, my major was in graphic design. Um, I went on to work for architects. I worked for Skidmore, Owings & Merrill for six years in the San Francisco office developing pattern, textiles, color, and then um, I took a funny turn. I was doing graphic design and um, got a call from a man in Los Angeles who was designing water features, but doing things with water that you've never seen before. It was amazing. And he hired me to do his, his graphics, his letterhead, his branding, as they would call it um, today. After I was done doing that, we became friends. He invited me to design a water feature, and I did the Los Angeles Music Center. And things grew from there, and I was there for 29 years. And I did the Bellagio in Las Vegas, and I choreographed water, including the Dubai Fountain. Um, it's all about water, but it's still pattern making. And that's really where I always was. It, so the jewelry work is pattern. It's just a scale difference, really. It goes from really big um, to really tiny and intimate, but it's still pattern making. It started as a hobby. My mother had these beautiful collection of necklaces that she wore every day that she got in Greece. It was a gift from my father, and these were bead crochet, and I just thought they were beautiful. Um, and, and I heard about a class at a local bead shop where I lived in San Francisco that was uh, teaching you how to do this. So I spent the two hours just to learn the basics and then it took me many years, at least six years I think, to practice and practice and get it to a point where it was presentable to a gallery like Patina Gallery here in Santa Fe. Um, it became very serious, but it didn't start out that way. And I, I learned from, from it that you can do some very rich, it's like mosaic, you know, little tiny units of different color that come together to create a larger expression or whole. Over the years, color has become the most, really most important single element. I adore color and I learned from my father and from others about approaches to color, quiet color, vibrant spectral color. Um, color can be used to express a, a kind of point of view, um, dressiness or, or, or a more casual, lively quality. And color can create fabulous progression and transition. At the fountains of Bellagio, transition is a kinetic thing the fountains move. So the transition is over time. It's like dance. With the bead crochet, the transitions happen as you move along a necklace. And you can design them in such a way that you can double a necklace and get a very different one side to the other. It can make it look like you're wearing two necklaces. It, the wearer who makes really their own has some fun decisions to make. Do they want to emphasize what passage in the piece do they want to emphasize? And that's all about color. The pattern is determined in the strand or the thread with the beads on it. Then when you crochet it into the rope, that is just an issue of craft. There's no design, there's no, there's no creative work 
that's done in the actual crocheting part. The crochet is just about high level craft and getting it as, as nicely made as possible. After all these years of doing it, um, I'll crochet two inches and think, oh, this is gonna be a beautiful necklace. And then it'll be eight inches and I'll think, I don't like this. This isn't gonna work. And then I'll get to 14 inches and I'll think, oh, this is good again. I mean, half the fun in this is the surprise, the unexpected. I think it's important to me to be uncompromising at this point, to not to change or alter the work to accommodate a client or a condition, but to do what really seems to work well to me. And, and I'm doing that and I'm having a blast. I'm having a wonderful time. I love my studio here in New Mexico. It's so beautiful. And so that's a kind of goal that I feel I've already achieved and I just want to keep going.